Hey everyone, this is Amy Chicken from Team Pandori, and today we have something special in this package. Apricot Abras. It's a Pandora's box. But not just any Pandora's box. Check this. This is the unreleased Pandora Box EX. It's a very early version of the box, and uh, yeah, we've got it. We've been asked to check it out and give some feedback. And with any luck, we'll have a decent final product. From the outside, it looks like any other Pandora box. Similar to the DX, it's got the power, HDMI, VGA, audio, volume wheel, settings button, and two USB ports. We also have the controller connector. Let's open it. We got a 64 gigabyte chan disk. On the board, we have one gigabyte of DDR4 RAM as well as 8GB of SanDisk EMMC NAND. On the back we have some green for all you stoners out there. And underneath this sticker we've got... Some, we've got space for something. Um, any guesses please comment down below I guess. Just gonna pull off this heatsink. It's a very interesting one. It's got a big hole in it and it looks awesome. What chipset is this using? Chocopaman says, It's a 905X2. So we've got a quad core 1.8 GHz running a Mali G31. Performance of this board should sit between the console X and the retro station. Let's see how long it takes to load. Games list is very similar to the DX. We've got the FBA 2012, MAME 2003, NES, Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, PlayStation, as well as a few newcomers, such as the PSP, Dreamcast, and N64. In the settings screen, not much new. Actually, it looks exactly the same. The IO test here. We got the custom layout. <laughs> yeah, and then some incomplete nonsense. A very early box indeed. System config, same old, same old. It's unfortunate they don't have something like aspect ratio like per core would be great. Instead we have quality optimization which should actually read uh, filtered nonsense and scanning line which is scan line. In the game setting tab we can check the lives list, favorite list. Bookkeeping is bookkeeping. Then we have a few languages, English, Korean and Spanish. Menu navigation clicks are still there. We would love an option to turn this off. But for now, let's check out some games. For the first test, we'll try King of Fighters 2001. So for starters, we can see that the screen is completely stretched. This will be fine for a 4.3 display. But now, most people have widescreen monitors. On both HDMI and VGA, 4.3 was not working at all. But hopefully it'll be corrected by the final product. This is how it looks with quality optimization. This is with the scanline filter. This could be improved a lot by checking out what's available on the RetroPie. And here we have both quality optimization as well as a scanline. Next game we have here is Metal Slug X. We can see with the scrolling that a lot of the tearing has been fixed from the DX. 
This is great news indeed. Another favourite of mine is Bonanza Bros. It played like bum on the previous models, but here it seems to be running a lot better. Here's Super Zaxxon. Mame can run the samples fine, and scrolling is also much smoother than the DX. Combat! This seems to be a benchmark title for most Pandora systems. And we can see it's a little choppy. We think this is due to it using the wrong emulator core. Here's the arcade version of Alternate Mortal Combat 3. We can see that Scorpion's fine butt crack is moving a lot smoother. Now this game here, Parasol Stars, it's it's a nice game. But there are far better versions of it out. They could have used the PC Engine version of this game and it would have been great for an arcade build. Here's RC Pro M. And some Rockman X. Super Nintendo. Streets of Rage, Mega Drive. Tekken 3, PlayStation. The games run well enough, but buttons are all over the place. These boards have been around for years now, and this has still not been fixed. This is ISS 2. There are about six games on the PlayStation alone. They're all the same. And attacking from right to left is Germany. Okay, so this is where we're going to hit some new ground. 3A have included N64. And in this game, we can configure all of the buttons. But how does this run? Chop City. Mario Kart 64. This is far easier to run than Killer Instinct Gold. As you see, this is running far better. So if 3A would just push the games that are easier to run, they'd have a lot more satisfied customers. Another very welcome addition is Dreamcast. We've got here Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and it runs really well. There are no graphical glitches like we have on the Mali 450, but buttons L and R are not mapped. So we only have four buttons on this. 
Damn it! Why? Another thing they've added is PSP emulation. Now this actually runs surprisingly well. Except for now. <laughs> oh my god, sorry. Yeah, it's very surprising that they added a ton of races to the PSP, because they're actually incredibly difficult to run. Steering feels a bit off. It could be that our arcade stick is configured as the analog stick on the PSP. Next game, Tekken 6. PSP. I mean, Mr. Wobbly Leg. PSP. This has actually been fixed on PPSSP late 2019. Tekken 6 is running actually quite well. Buttons do need reconfiguring, they're all over the place. And also, one player only. Final Fantasy Crisis Core, PSP. Does run really good, but considering it's over one gigabyte in size, it's an RPG, and in English, it limits the amount of people that will play this. So on our micro SD, we have the game folder. This is where all of our ROMs are. The file system is very similar to the DX, where all of the folders with the ROMs underscore prefix, we can add games to. So we've got FBA, FC for NES, MAME 2003, Mega Drive, PlayStation, PSP, and Super Famicom, which is Super Nintendo. In the PSP folder here, we have the ROMs I've added. If you look closely, these are actually small in size. This is because I've compressed them to CSO. If you insert CSO files here, the system will not pick them up. So all I did was rename CSO to ISO, then the Pandora Box EX can actually pick them up. Here's a few games I added. This is on Xenocrisis, on the Mega Drive. Here's a Star Fox hack, enables two players. and wipe out Pulse. So there's no N64 or Dreamcast ROMs folder. So the only way I could test a different game out was to go into the ROMs folder, then replace some of the other game files. So the games menu would look for this GDI file here, and for these N64 files down here. Live and let die. This game plays great, but same again, only four buttons. So what other places can 3A improve on? Well, if you check the PlayStation folder, this whole folder takes up about 13 gigabytes. If you compress all of these files to PBP, it'd give you about five gigabytes more space. Another thing we could do is be more selective in the titles. We've got six winning 11 titles on the PlayStation 1. I don't know who plays Barbie, but it seems that a lot of the PSP games are not even arcade games at all. Here are a few suggestions for games that we would add.
So with this early version of the box, so far we can see it's better spec, there's less tearing, and there's newer systems. And for our wish list, aspect ratio for both HDMI and VGA. As we have a faster CPU now, newer main version. N64 DC ROM folders. The controls actually tested and also an unlocked bootloader so we can throw on Emuelec if we need to. Anyway, if you enjoyed that, please like and subscribe. I'll catch you on the next one. See you later, guys.